This is the model F1 deluge valve. Uh, the deluge valve is being used on a deluge uh, system here. And this particular system, uh, we have our trim piping here, we have a pneumatic actuator, and then we have our pilot line that comes out of the top, or our release system, right? So this particular setup is a pneumatic release, or a dry pilot, and the trim piping that's located right here, you'll see that this pneumatic actuator is the transition between prime water pressure that holds the valve closed and our pneumatic air pressure that is maintaining the prime water pressure into the valve itself. Now the valve is hydraulically held closed, so we're using water pressure to hold the valve in the closed position. But in this case, we're also using the air pressure to hold that water pressure into the trim piping itself. So to go ahead and activate this system, we'll need to release the air pressure that's in the pneumatic release or the dry pilot uh, side of the valve uh, piping here to get that pressure, that prime water pressure, to be released in the prime chamber. We have two manual release stations here. We have one on the left, one on the right. The one on the left would be located at the far end of the hydraulic release, or I'm sorry, the pneumatic release. And uh, that manual release station would relieve the air pressure that's in the piping and would relieve the air pressure that's on the top of the pneumatic actuator, which would cause the prime water pressure to push through it and go to drain and trip the valve. This manual release here is located on the trim piping here at the riser. And if I were to operate this manual release, I would truly be relieving the prime water pressure directly out of the trim piping here and sending it to drain and cause the valve to trip. So in a, in a pneumatic release or a dry pilot, the manual pull station that's located on the end of the uh, pilot piping is going to truly test the pneumatic actuator. The manual pull station here at the riser is only going to relieve the water pressure that's in the prime chamber and not test the pneumatic actuator. So to go ahead and trip this system, we're going to activate our manual release here, which is going to relieve our air pressure. And our valve trips. To shut the system down, we're going to go ahead and secure the system control valve, and we're going to open our drains. Now if we have a drain located on the top side of the valve, our system main drain, we can open the main drain. We'll get the main drain in the open position. We'll open our auxiliary drain, which communicates directly to the outlet chamber. So we'll go ahead and open that. And then on the back side here, we have our flow test connection. So we're going to go ahead and open that drain as well. Now the valve itself, or the riser itself, is uh, being completely drained. To reestablish this riser for service, uh, this particular riser, again, with the Model F using the pneumatic release trim piping or the dry pilot, we're going to start off by closing our manual release valve that's located on the far end of the trim piping for the pilot line. Now, before we do that, though, I want to point out that the air supply is, is turned on at this particular point. So our D2 air maintenance device is in the open position, and you can hear the air that's passing through the pneumatic pilot. Now the other thing is our prime water pressure valve is in the on possession and we've never closed that uh, valve itself. Now if the riser were to be shut down for an extended period, we may want to secure the air and the prime water pressure so we're not uh, just letting the, the air compressor run and uh, sending that water to drain for no reason. But if we're just doing a trip test of the valve, we can leave those valves in the open position. And once we close our uh, manual release, we will start to build that air pressure back up. And as that air pressure reestablishes, it'll close our pneumatic actuator here. And when the pneumatic actuator closes, it'll then reestablish our prime water pressure. So two out of the three steps are going to be squared away for us just by simply closing the manual release. So I have the manual release closed, my air pressure reestablished here, and that is closing the pneumatic actuator and our prime water valve is on, so now we're starting to build our prime water pressure. And our prime water pressure has now been reestablished, and the valve is in the closed position. The only thing left at this point is to close our drains and to reestablish our water supply. So we're going to close our auxiliary drain, which communicates to the outlet chamber. If we have a system main drain, we're going to close that. And in this particular case, we're going to close, or partially close, our flow test connection and we're going to open our water supply valve. As we open our water supply valve, 
and get water flowing into the system itself. We're going to go ahead and close the flow test connection the rest of the way and we'll open our water supply valve here to the system itself, uh, get it fully open and the system has been completely restored. We have a green panel. If we wanted to test the alarm or the PS10 water flow switch, we're going to use our alarm test valve which is located right here in the trim. When we open this valve, we're going to send water pressure up into the piping here and around to the PS10 switch that's located over here. Now the PS10 switch has a valve located on it which is an alarm isolation valve. If we want to take that PS10 switch and move it up or take that valve out of the picture, then it would be considered an uninterruptible location which means that we wouldn't have the ability to turn off the PS10 switch. So in this case we have that half inch valve that's located over here, it's a ball style valve and it's got to be in the open position in order to receive that signal. So this valve here, we're going to take this, this is going to test our PS10 water flow switch, we're going to activate this valve and we'll get our water flow alarm to our panel itself and then we're going to close this valve and as we close this valve, our pressure is going to pass through the drain check here and once that pressure is relieved off the PS10 flow switch, our, uh, our panel will clear so to speak, we might have to hit the reset button if we're tied to a VFR 400 but that pressure is going to drain off through the drain check valve itself. That drain check valve is noted by a red sticker on the top that says drain check. It's essentially a, a check valve with a small pass through that allows that pressure to bleed off. If you operate that valve and you can't get the water pressure to relieve off of the PS10 switch, it may be because there's debris in the drain check valve preventing that pressure from being relieved and resetting the PS10 switch. 